So normally a calculus class would start off and you would be you would just start taking some limits. Alright, we need limits. But they're kind of boring. So I'm gonna show you why we need limits. What, what's kind of the payoff? Alright. And the payoff is to be able to answer the first question that we have in calculus. Okay, as a general question. And that would be hopefully I got around to everybody. The question generally would be I guess this isn't general, this is more specific. Say you have this parabola, which could be a model of a projectile going up into the air and coming down. Okay? I just had you find the slope between two points. Okay. Now with any curve, uh, you know, geometry means a circle, but with any curve you have two points, we draw a line between those two points. What kind of a line do we draw? S oh, oh. B secant line. Okay, so a secant line is a line that goes between two points on a curve. Mm -hmm. um, then I asked you, you know, to find the slope between find the slope between those two points, and then what does that mean? What do we determine that that the slope of this line means? That's the velocity. Velocity when. Okay, so what we're really finding, if we are finding the slope between two points, is the average velocity. On average, it's gone this far in this amount of time, so it's gone about this many feet per second, meters per second, whatever. Okay. Um, so that's the average velocity, but what we want to find is something we call, what would you think? We're going to find the velocity at this, this time. What would you call, not between these two points, but yes, the instantaneous, inst at that very instant, what is the velocity, okay? Now we can know that in a situation like we're driving our car, right? How do you know your instantaneous velocity? Just put out. Just put out. You look at the at any given moment, you can know how fast you're going, right? The um, problem is we kind of are missing that data. We, we don't have uh, speedometer readouts from the ball. We just have distance and time. Okay. So I had, to, I had to do something next, something that became a better approximation of the actual instantaneous velocity at this time, whatever that time was that I asked you about. What did I have to do that made it a better approximation of that instantaneous velocity? Was it take more data or get closer to that point? Get closer. So I, I purposefully picked two points that had a point in between so we can then go between. Right? And we use this slope. And that is, what can we say about that slope? Steeper. Steeper. Okay. High velocity. And how does it relate to our question? What is our question? What's the, instantaneous, you know, what's the instantaneous velocity? So what does it have to say about the instantaneous velocity? Closer, closer to it. What would get us even closer to the instantaneous mm -hmm. velocity? Get closer. Get closer. And what would be better than that? Get closer. And better than that? Get closer. Could we ever get to the point where we're like, don't get any closer, that it won't get any better? No. No, it would always get better. It might get, get, get better by one, one million billion, but it will always get closer. Right? So what do we want to have those two points do? Yeah, we would like them to intersect, but here's, maybe not for you, but for me, a mind-blowing thing. Once those points touch, they are the same point, and now there is no line between those two points. Okay? So here's the cool thing. We can do it. We can have them meet. We can have them lie on top of each other and find the slope between the two points that are on top of each other and then all of a sudden know the instantaneous velocity, right? That's pretty, that's pretty wild. Okay. But we are limited by our own data. Our equipment could possibly take an infinite number of data points. It's not reasonable, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and no matter how good the data, at some point there's a gap between this point and this point, okay? So, you know, the kind of thing we wanna do, we wanna work with functions, we don't wanna work with, uh, you know, continuous functions. Yeah. That's what we wanna work with, right? You can't have gaps. Gotta have continuous functions. All right. 
So, anybody have any questions? Instantaneous. Okay. Does that make sense? We're looking for instantaneous, well, let's, let's generalize it. Let's not just call it velocity, because not all functions will have slopes that are velocity. In general, if this is just a function that I don't have any units necessarily here, this is just y, and this is x, then what will this slope tell me at any point? So I to go back to velocity, think about what is velocity. Okay, but this isn't necessarily distance, right? Not necessarily speed, not necessarily velocity. This could be dollars, and this could be years, and this could be uh, you know, pounds of cheese, and this could be, I mean, it could be anything. Right? So all the way in general, what does the slope of this line tell us? OK, not just y over x. Right, not just the y value over the x value, this y value over this x value. Change in the y value. Okay, so the change in the y value, so we can call it delta y. And the change in x, we call it delta x. Delta y, delta x. Okay? Now, this is nothing new. You've heard of delta y over delta x before, I'm sure, taking y over change in x. That's the slope in between two points. Okay? We're going we're gonna to mess around with this. What we want to find is delta y over delta x. We want to develop something that I'm pretty sure you used in pre calc already. We're going to give it, hopefully, more meaning, more context. Okay. And let's just say in general, just because it's going to come up so much, you have a function where you put something in for, say, x and get something out for, say, y, we have the rate of change. The rate of change of what? The rate of change of y versus the change in x. Okay. We talk about the slope of a graph, we're going to talk about its rate of change. The word rate of change will be used just all the time. Okay. So we want to think slope of a tangent line. Okay. So once we get down to that one point and our slope goes, our line goes right through that, just that one point, it barely touches that graph and it doesn't go through it again. That's a tangent line. Okay. And when we get to a slope of a tangent line, we're talking about the rate of change, instantaneous rate of change. All right. It's as general as it can be. So let's develop this thing that you guys have seen before, uh, but hopefully give it more context. So instead of y, let's call it f of x. We're all good with that, right? That's not going to confound anybody. Anyone confounded? So just with pictures and brains, our brains, we're going to use those, we're going to develop something that you were just asked to use, but you know, we're gonna make it up. And this is the thing that is amazing to me, but using very, very simple tactics, we can answer a very difficult question to answer, and that is, what, what's the slope of a line? It only goes through one point, we only know one point. That's such a weird question. So, let's start at x. Because what we wanna know is the slope at x. Let's continue with awesome. Uh, so for this x, can I know f of x? Yeah. Of course. How do I know f of x? Plug it into f of x. It couldn't be easier. Let's say that that is f of x. OK, so what's been our approach thus far? It's not laminated yet. So everyone for lunch has like finished. It's so not looking dead. It looks really nice. And you guys gave me crap. It's not even like they don't even overlap. So there's like a, a gap. Yeah, so that's me. Wait. There's a gap. It's walking. Yes. Okay, so in our experiment, what what more did we take, you know, into consideration? What more did we look at so that we could find some velocity? Use another point. We want to know the slope, and we need another point, right? So far, all we can do to find slopes is to find another point. With calculus, there is no way to not have another point. So we need another point. Let's go from that calculus to calculus by starting with another point. Here we go. 
any other point anywhere else, let's take it here so that it's just easy to see. So here's this other point. Okay? And I'm just going to go straight to like the easiest way to look at, look at this. That would be, well, as you talk about the slope between these two points, talk about this guy right here. What is this distance right here? The change in x. Okay. So there's our delta x. That's what we want to find, right? Delta y over delta x. That is delta x. The space between those two x values is delta x. We could call this x plus plus that little bit of difference. All right, we could go through, this is x2, this is x1, let's find the difference, let's call the difference delta x. Let's just cut to the chase. This is delta x, and this is x plus delta x. So here's an x value, here's an, another x value, it's just x plus a little bit more. All right, when you think about it, that's what we're doing, we're just going here and moving over just a little bit. Okay, what would we call this? x plus delta x. What does that mean? In case it might look confusing, I don't blame you. We take whatever x is, we add a little bit, okay? Say it's 1, we'll add 0 0.01. So 1.01. 1 .01. Whatever that is, we take it, we put it into the function, it gives us this other y value. Okay? So now we have two x's and two y's. Let's assume we know how far it is between here and there. So let's move over just a little bit. Let's move over 0.01. Let's move even less, 0 0.001, right? That we know our delta x. Let's just say that. So let's say our denominator is delta x. You get what's going on here? What are we, what are we finding right now? Slope. Slope between two points, any two points, that are delta x. Let's build the top here, okay? How do we find the change in y? Y2 minus y1. Y2 minus y1, does that sound familiar? Y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. Okay, so in this case, what would we call y2? F of x plus delta x. There's our y2 minus y1, f of x. Does this look familiar? Especially if I change this delta x to h, f of x plus h minus f of x. The difference. H. Difference. Quotient. Quotient. Okay. So, uh, Tyler, can you explain to me, if I use this, what will it tell me? Instantaneous. No, not quite. Pretty helpful. Pretty helpful. It's getting us there. Slope. Slope. Slope of a line. Yes, slope of a line. Yes. Between two points, right? Between any two points, this will tell me that this is just another way of saying y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Just give it different names. But we're concentrating on, a, on h, right? Because what did we say we wanted to do? Wanted to do so we could get an even better and even better and even better approximation of the instantaneous velocity, instantaneous rate of change. Or get closer and closer. What can we do with this? So it translates to getting closer and closer and closer. Yeah. Make it a limit. Okay, you guys done with limits? With your calculus? No. Did the very very end. The very very end. We did some limits. Yeah. Okay. Well. What do we want? What do we want to do to this quotient so that this distance gets smaller and smaller and smaller? What would we like the distance between them to be? Zero. We want it to be zero. We want them to be right on top of each other. It's such a strange idea to let these two points be on top of each other. They would there then be one point and have to have a slope. But here we have this expression, which the smaller h is. The smaller h is what? If h is smaller, then the points get closer together. And how does that translate to our instantaneous velocity? Closer to the velocity. 
smaller H gets, the, the closer we get to our instantaneous velocity. Okay? So we can go down to zero. If we could somehow have that happen, we would get our instantaneous velocity. That's pretty, that's pretty, pretty cool, pretty amazing. Um, so what we call that is the limit of this expression as h goes zero. Could somehow make that happen. Now, do you see any immediately pro immediate problems with letting h be zero? Zero in the denominator. Okay, so there's going to be some way to deal with that. There is a way to deal with that. Maybe the next, next. That's good. Do something simple. Let's make a simple equation. A simple function, f of x. Negative 2x squared plus 2x. Instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent line, all these things I'm saying, they're interchangeable. Instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent line uh, at, uh, let's just go with two. Now let's go with four. Now let's go with five. Let's go with five. And then we'll get kind of mixed up with those twos and threes. And then we'll be a four, which is a multiple of two. So we'll go with five. First of all, let's start off really slowly and show me f of x plus h. You got f of x, show me about f of x plus h. Okay. So you need a piece of paper out. I gave you a piece of paper. Let's see it happen. 